Hello and welcome to a special presentation from In The Money Media. This one's brought to you by our friends at the JRA. Been really enjoying for the last couple of seasons covering the Japanese racing that happens on the East Coast uh, late Saturday night into Sunday morning with many of the same faces you see on the screen now. You can always read about those races too over at InTheMoneyPodcast.com with free past performances and great analysis from uh, many on this team uh, that go up on Saturdays. And I've really enjoyed watching and learning about this racing. And as we saw two years ago uh, in California at the Breeders' Cup, major Breeders' Cup implications too, coming by way of Japan. We're just going to – I'm not even going to do intros. I'll introduce you all as we go. Uh, and we're going to start off with uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And Ekaro Neo, who's making this uh, sort of, to my mind anyway, surprise appearance, this maiden in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Toshi Onokubo coming to us from Japan. We'll start with you. Am I correct, Toshi, in saying that an Ekaro Neo win in this race would uh, would be a, a bigger shock than Marsh Lorraine two years ago in the distaff? Does that sound about right to you? Uh, definitely, be it, you know. He's, he's a maiden horse, you know, never won the race. So I was, to be honest, you know, surprised as well. He actually entered the, uh, you know, Breeders Cup Juvenile, and he, he would be a big surprise for everyone if he wins the Breeders Cup Juvenile, I'd say. Michael Adolfson, I want to bring you in. You're as bullish as I know of uh, about the chances of the Japanese horses at the Breeders' Cup this year. Are you seeing anything in a Coroneo beyond the, beyond the obvious that makes you think he's got a sleeper shot? I, I don't think it's impossible that he would win the race. I think he's a decent horse. I think he showed that last time and always against weaker company. Um, but his he closed like a machine uh, once he leveled out. It was a six furlong race over a much deeper surface, which to me, that's okay. They got him nice and fit. Um, he's going to jump up and trip. He's a Bernardini. He's going to turn left, which he's already done that in a race in his first run. Um, I don't see anything. And he has the right trainer, to be honest. Uh, Hideo Kimori knows how to get them ready to come to the States better than anyone. Uh, and the trainer brought a, a horse that didn't quite belong on paper a few years ago to finish a good fourth. So uh, to me, to me, I, I kind of expect that horse to do very similarly in this spot, I think he'll finish in the first five. I'm just not sure he's good enough to win. Klaus Ebner, you've taught me a lot about how differently maidens specifically are campaigned in Japan as opposed to the USA. But this pattern, even by Japanese standards, just it, it, I find kind of uh, mind blowing and difficult to difficult to get my uh, noggin around. Are you seeing it at all with a coronel? Uh, yeah, again, I, I, I can see pedigree wise, I can see it, you know, being by Bernardini of a street sense mayor. So, you know, for me, the pedigree says yes. And I'm, I'm at, you know, to, to Michael's point, certainly more will have him ready to go. So I, I listen, at the end of the day, you know, it's to be the question of whether, whether or not he's good enough. You know, I, I at least appreciate the fact that, you know, he, he at least had a, had, had a go over a mile and a quarter uh, on his first start over turf. So, you know, the fact he'll have some, some, base to him, at least going two turns and a little bit of stamina there. So again, it's not out of the realm in my, in my opinion, based on his last run. Alex Henry will bring you in as well. I said right on the show before, we weren't going to just do every question to the same person, but uh, I need to, I, I need one more piece of uh, confirmation about Ecoroneo and, and, and what you think the chances might be in the, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And by the way, congratulations on that striking background. Just a gorgeous shot of uh, Sadashi behind you there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I think, you know what, anything's possible. And as you know, everyone else has said, that track uh, in Japan is deep. That dirt is deep. It's sandy. It's tiring. He's going to come in tremendous form. And hey, my shirt is from the National uh, Racing Museum Hall of Fame. It says upset. I don't know if you can see it. Um, <laughs> yeah. An upset can happen. So <laughs> let's never say never. It is no sure things in horse racing, as we've seen at various uh, Kentucky Derbies and uh, many other major races. Let's move on to a horse who's cross entered in the Philly and Mare sprint and the sprint. And that's Make a Yell. Alex, we'll send it to you first for your thoughts on this one. First, the preferences are listed at Philly and Mare sprint at the seven furlongs and then the, the sharper sprint at six. Which do you think the right spot would be for Mikaia? That's a great question. I mean, her form has kind of fallen off, um, to be really honest. Um, the past year, it hasn't been the best. She hasn't won. Um, but if we dig back to 2022, we have two wins. Um, 
posted in grade two races, uh, one at seven furlongs and one at six. So I can see how, you know, there's a, <laughs> a little bit of a toss up in what to enter her in. I would say I would go for the sprint um, only because she set a record um, at six, what we would equivalent six furlongs um, at 106. One minute, six seconds, point two. So that was a new record. Um, and she beat some nice horses that day at that distance. Maybe take the chance at the six. That's what I would say. Interesting. Michael, where do you stand on the distance question for May KL? And, and what do you think her chances are in either spot? I think she entered the wrong race. I think she should have entered the mile. I think that she's a proper seven furlong horse. Six and a half to seven is her, hits her on the nose. And those horses, when they come to the States, do really well over a mile. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I think that, I don't know, if they think that she's going to handle the dirt, take a shot um, in a race that you looks like there are two horses to beat in there. Um, but the, the, the five furlongs to me is just too sharp. She's going to have to be sharper than she's ever been out of the gate. Um, or she's going to have to make one run and hope that they come back to her. And that just doesn't seem to happen when this race happens at Santa Anita or when it's five furlongs in California in general. Um, I just think it might, the, the five furlongs, I, watch her win now, obviously, but the five <laughs> furlongs could be a wasted race on her. Um, either try the dirt, try something new. Uh, you know, I, that's where I would go. I would go into the dirt and just see if she can handle it. She has signs all over her pedigree that go every which direction. Um, so it wouldn't be a shock if she did. Toshi, how about you? Were you as surprised by uh, by this entry in the Breeders' Cup as uh, the maiden we talked about previously, or does, does this one compute a little bit more to you? Well, you know, the, there's you know very, very few options for those you know sprinters or you know seven foreign horses in Japan, and you know including you know Hong Kong. So you know it was probably you know difficult decision for them to make. But you know, ho however, you know there, there's. Yeah, minimum option, you know, Hong Kong a Breeders Cup. Then, you know, they decided to, you know, switch to Dart, I believe. You know, there's two entries, of course, but yeah, you know, I think what they want to do is, yeah, give a shot, give her a shot, you know, try try Dart and Seven Farden, you know, for you know, Philly and Mare Sprint. I think that's what they're gonna do. Class, what about the pedigree on this one uh for 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 dirt? How are you feeling about that? I'm actually, again, for me, it's, uh, I agree with, again, Mike again, sorry, Mike, but uh, I just, you know, for, for me, it's more just the fact that I just think that she's more suited to seven furlongs in here with that pedigree. And you know what, this is, uh, the dam side is more kind of, it actually is related to uh, to Sodashi. Um, if you look at some of the, the Yuki-chan as well as Harbinger, so it's out of a Harbinger mare um, by Deep Impact. So, uh well, Deep Impact is the is the sire sire of uh, Mickey Isle, who's the who's the sire of Mickey Isle. So, um, again, I, I just think it's a it's a bit of a sneaky dirt pedigree, and I think that's one. You know, it, it, listen, if if she's up near the near the pace or close to it, and not taking dirt in her face, I think she has a shot. And that's just my opinion. I think if, if she's ridden that way, I think she has a shot. But again, it's, there's a lot of question marks there. I'm willing to throw out some of the the previous races. You know, I, I, she finished twelfth behind. Uh, you know, a few others in the Takamutsu and uh, Keenan. Uh, that was a soft turf course. Wanted to throw that out. But, you know, her sprinter stakes wasn't that bad. You know, yeah, she, 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 she was she was very close to, to, to the wire there. So it was respectable. And I think, you know, on her best, I, I think she's a shot. Let's pivot to the Philly and Mare turf and win Maryland. This is a horse who, based on the recent runs, I wouldn't give all that much count to, but then there's that form line that just stands out like a, like a sore thumb, but in a good way, if that can be a thing, that Hong Kong Vaz run, obviously huge world-class form in that one, which win Maryland do you think we're going to see in this race, Toshi? Well, I think that's, you know, she, she's a very interesting one. And, you know, this time around, you know, Christian Demuro booked, I think the seriousness, you know, shows that, yeah, I, I would say, you know, she's a very good, she would have a very good chance for, yeah, this race. Have we seen excuses, Michael Adolfson, for the last couple of runs? I mean, what, do you, is there a reason why we think she's going to be getting back to that form? I mean, I take Toshi's point about, uh, you know, the, the, if, if you just go by the best races these horses have run, you, you know, right there. But I, I'm just, I'm hesitating because of those recent runs. I mean, the Sake Show was 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 an okay run. It wasn't terrible. There were some very good horses in the race. Um, Sapporo Cannon was a tough race, and she got stomped. Didn't do well, just didn't run her race that day. Just two bad races like that doesn't really give me a lot of confidence in her form. 
what worries me a little bit more is watching her work pattern and 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 she's been working with Sol Orians and he outworked her the other day and then he ran subpar in the St. Ledger. I don't know if he didn't quite stay or if it's just they're both on a bad cycle right now. So, I mean, it, it, th th those things don't speak to me as far as confidence level goes. But I do think that when you go back, if you think she's getting the firm ground, maybe she prefers. Uh, she doesn't win very often, but I still don't think she's quite the filly she was one year ago. Alex, where do you stand on the question of win Marilyn? And what price do you think she's going to be in here? Great question. I want to correct myself. Um, in the previous um, horse for Mickey Yell, I was picking up a six furlong sprint. I actually thought she was in the sprint, not the the races she's actually crossing her for. I would actually pick the Philly Mare sprint at seven furlong. So I do apologize for my uh, my misstep there. <laughs> it's, a, it's an amazing horse that you could make a case could be in four different Breeders' Cup races. <laughs> Very true. That's a fact. Um, but regarding when Marilyn, um, I just want to add to it. It's kind of concerning her last two in her last two races. She was fading, so it's like she was prominent she so she showed some speed sitting like fourth third uh and then faded to to ninth in both of her last races so i don't like that either um just another negative thing and i think when marilyn will sit just because she is a japanese uh, shipper coming over and people are interested i bet she'll sit around 25 to 1 20 to 1 maybe i think that's overinflated odds <laughs> Sound about right to you, Michael? Yeah, I, 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 and I think that the one thing that is worth with with evaluating price to to talent ratio and looking at at the class of runner, she is taking a class drop, and I think that that is something we have to consider when you're using whether or not you want. I, I will use her in my top four because she is taking a class drop. I just don't have confidence she can win against a couple of these fillies. It is amazing. I mean, one great thing about the Breeders' Cup, you can see Now we've discussed the mitigating circumstances since, but a Hong Kong Vons winner at, at 20 to 1 uh, on the class drop. I mean, that's that's the kind of thing that's special about the Breeders' Cup, right, Class, Where do you stand on Win Marilyn? And do you agree that that's the kind of odds she's likely to be? Yeah, I'm, 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 I agree. She'll be double digits uh, just based on her last few. And that's what everyone will see. But if you go back through her, her career past performances, like she's a very streaky horse. So, you know, when, when she's right, she's right. When she's not right, she's horrible. Uh, and that's just how she's been throughout, throughout her whole career, if you look at it. Um, you know, she, she strung, strung a few really good performances together when she finished second in the Oaks back in 2020. But, you know, outside of that, it's just been, you know, those kind of same kind of 16th, 9th, 8th, 7th. And then she'll all of a sudden, boom, pop up and run, you know, a, a big race like she did. Uh, in the spring, summer of last year, you know, winning the Hong Kong Vaz and also finishing second behind Geraldina at 10 to 1 in the QE2. So um, I don't know. I, I just, for me, it's just, she, again, you're, you're going to, you're taking full risk reward with, with Win Maryland in this race. And if, if you're right, you're going to be right because she'll be at 20, 30 to 1 probably in the race. The Japanese runner that will be the shortest price of any of the Japanese runners on the day comes to us in the Breeders' Cup mile. That song line, this is a horse, Klaus, that you and I have been talking about for this race for more than a year because it sounded like they were pointing last year. That didn't work out. This year, she is scheduled to appear. How good of a chance does she have? Are you still as high on her as, as you were uh, at points? Yeah, I'm on the bandwagon uh, with both fists. So uh, <laughs> I, for me, it's just I, I think this race hits right between the eyes. She's a miler. She always has been a miler. And, you know, despite the fact that she, you know, she won over uh, a sprint distance in Saudi Arabia in the past, I just think that this is this is her race to lose uh, when, when she's at their Breeders' Cup. Yes, there are some, obviously, some some feisty ones from around the world, but I just think that, you know, she the, her turn of foot she has, she showed it last time out in the Manichi Okan in their prep for this. I think it's a perfect prep for her. Uh, I, I already heard that Keito, Keito Tosaki will ride her yet again. He's, you know, doing very, with, very well with her in her last three starts, including two great ones. Uh, at both Victoria Mile and Isuda Keenan. And I, I just, again, uh, I, you know, the only, only trouble she's going to have is traffic and a, and, a, and a post. But outside of that, I still think she can go five, six wide and still win this race, probably. She makes those kind of electrifying runs that you often see doing well in these USA turf miles. And one thing, of course, when you watch her tape, you can't miss is that uh, white horse behind you, Alex, and the way her form ties so closely in with Sodashi. Where do you stand with Songline in the Breeders' Cup mile? Will she uh, maybe bring Sodashi form lines uh, some glory? I sure hope so. I'm definitely on the bandwagon as well. Um, I think at least if you're betting trifectas or you know hor uh, horizontal wagers, your pick four, your pick five must include. Uh, I really love her chances here. 
Toshi, how about you? And is this a major story, as I would think it is, in Japanese racing about Songline coming over here? You know, they, they planned for her, you know, last year as well. And, you know, this year, you know, she's she's in top form and she's definitely reading Japanese Breeders' Cup contenders. And as Kraus said, you know, very good combination with Kate Tosaki. Yes, definitely she she's a good chance in the Breeders' Cup. Would four to one sound like fair odds to you, Toshi? Well, you know, it's it's very difficult to compare, you know, against, you know, European forms and, you know, your US form, but, you know, Anything over my plus in Japan is, you know, highly competitive in any grade, grade one races in the world, I'd say. So four to one, yeah, I would go for it. Fair enough. Michael, can we make it a chorus for Songline in the Mile? Or uh, I have a feeling you might have your eye on a couple others in here too. I mean, I I, I have two two lines of thought here. I think that uh, I would love to get a better price on her like I was expecting, expecting to get last year. Um, I thought she could have beaten Modern Games. Um, and if I thought that last year and she's just as good this year, there's no reason not to go with her again. What I do like about her is that she is, she can put her, put herself into the race and make her own luck. Um, and she, she likes to fight. Uh, and she, she finishes through the line. Like she's, she really just sticks her neck out. So that's, that's going to be all in her favor. Um, right now the odds, uh, you're looking at five to one, four way, four horses are all five to one leading the market now along with. Paddington, Modge, and Master of the Seas. And I'd take her over those three easily. Um, oh, I mean, and, and off the Japanese bandwagon, I do think that there's like a couple of massive prices in there we have to look at. Like Cheryl Spite has no reason to be, to be 33 to one. Um, so <laughs> I think I think he'll run top three in the race again. So if, if, if I'm staying with her and she's gonna be a low, little lower on the pair of mutuals than I expect, and I'm betting a big try uh, I'm using big prices like Cheryl Spite and Wynn Carnelian as well. Oh my goodness. So this could, this could be one that lights up the board potentially if you get those euros out of there and Songline and the, some bombs in. Let's talk about the Breeders' Cup turf and another confusing past performance cut <laughs> in the form of uh, Sharyar, a horse that we've talked about plenty on these airwaves. For me, again, this one, you know, you, you, there's a couple of lines of form on there. Well, specifically that Japan Cup run that sure looked like they'd uh, they'd make him awfully dangerous in that spot. But then there's a lot of uh, form lines that make me think maybe he's going to be a cut below the the big, huge European heavy hitters in this spot. Michael, how do you see Sharyar? Uh, I think the huge note that you have to take out of his worst run ever, he's coming out of his worst run ever, is that he had third surgery afterward. Um, that's a huge thing. And they said he's moving well, uh, at least in my Google translations, it's saying he's moving well and they're happy with him. Uh, he's a horse that, if he runs his A plus race like he did in the Shima two years ago, a uh, year and a half ago, he he's he's right there. But I don't know if he's good enough to beat most Adaf at his best, um, and that's the horse to beat in my opinion. But Sharia, I think at his very best, if he gets a better trip than they do and something something goes awry in the race, there's no reason he can't win. Uh, and looking at his form, go back and watch the Shima again this year. He did not run a bad race. He ran a he ran a he ran a very good race and he finished extremely well. He just ran into Equinox Westover, uh, was, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like that's 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 it. Uh, and if Westover's that was Westover's A race, so that gives you a line on what where Sharyar sits with the Europeans, and mm -hmm. that to me says his very best puts him in the frame, kind of like when Maryland. His very best puts him in the frame, but I think most of will stuff stomp a mud hole into him. <laughs> Your, your prejudice is coming through there. I like it. But all right, you mentioned about the news and the throat surgery and Google Translate. Who needs Google Translate when you have Toshi Kubo to tell us what the news has been about Sharyar? What is, what is the, the what is the scoop on uh, how he's done since the last race? And are you expecting we might see his A race? I mean, he he has done surgery, you know, as, as Michael said, you know, uh, that was, you know, Epigrotic uh, entrapment. I mean, okay. it's a sort of surgery. But last last round was well, end of August. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure he's at the best performance he can do in the Breeders' Cup with you know those trips. Even it's West Coast, you know, across to Japan. But yeah, and he, even he's at the best performance. Yeah, it's it's a very difficult race to win against you know top European horses. 
it came up salty this year. There's no two ways about it. And that's an interesting point about the condition and, uh, and, and, and where what he might be ready to produce relative to his best race. Klaus, are you a believer at all? This is a horse we've talked about before. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm still in this camp. You know, again, he he beat one of my favorite horses of all time in the Derby, that being Euphoria. So uh, I'll give him that. Uh, I still hate him for that, but uh, you know, out, out, outside of that, uh, he speaks I, I, so well of you, class. I well, can't. Well, you know, yeah, it's okay. Hill okay. Of Fort I know. Um, but uh, you know, for the most part, I, I, I agree with what's been said so far, and, and certainly it's going to be you know a bit to ask for off of that layoff from August the 20th. But I think you know, again, he has the right connections there. Um, I'm glad that Demuro's back aboard in terms of the jockey. So he's already with him, you know, numerous times. I mean, count probably five or six times at least in his career so far. So, you know, he's not going with a unfamiliar jockey. So uh, again, things to like about him there. Um, and again, I, I think he'll be a lot closer to the pace than than people think uh, in terms of the race. And uh, again, I haven't really studied the the pace layout so far, but I think he'll be right there uh, turning for home. And uh, I, I think. Mike's right. There's a few salty or, or pretty pretty powerful Europeans in there, especially a Japanese bred August Renan. That's uh, probably my <laughs> the Japanese horse. I think really is the one to watch right. in that race. Uh, so I'll take Mike on with a head to head uh, August Renan. It must have been bet. So there we go. Any day. I'm ready Are you for accepting it. that challenge, Mike? No, I would take it any day. I just think most of is 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 exactly what he wants, <laughs> and he's going to get it. We'll have a lot more discussion of this race between now and the big day. Alex, I want to get a thought from you on Sharyar. And maybe since it's come up, do you have an early fancy in, in, in the turf if it isn't Sharyar? You know what? I'm going to take a Sharyar just for two quick points. Number okay. one, most likely going to get that firm, firm rattle your hooves turf at Santa Anita this year. And number two is right here, his sire, Deep Impact. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. The goat, my favorite resource of all time of life. So I'm taking him. Alex, really winning the game with the props, guys. You gotta, you gotta think <laughs> about your, your background and prop uh, and prop game. The, the, the Toshi's background is pretty cool. We'll give him, we'll give him, uh, we'll give him that one. We'll continue on with. I mean, this race, the classic, it's just so fascinating and not least because of the international participation. And we've got two interesting horses here in Ushba Tesoro and Derma Sotogake. And what I like about these two is I feel like, and I had this conversation when we, we, we talked about the classic with Randy Moss in another video, which people can check out, but we can kind of get a line on, on USA style speed figures. And back in Dubai, it was uh, the three-year-old, Derma Sotogake, who put up the kind of number that would make you think you're, you're really dealing with a Breeders' Cup classic contender here. I think the unofficially clocked buyer for that was something along the lines of 105 to like the 101 of Ushba Tesoro. I mean, both of them come here with chances, in my opinion, in what looks like an open race. Of the two, Toshi, who do you prefer between the two Japanese Raiders for the Classic? And uh, do you think they have chances? Yeah, very good question. I would take Ushba Tesoro, you know, down there, Masutake Pasnori. And, you know, he's unbeaten, you know, since last, what, October? And, yeah, very good horse. But, again, you know, dart racing in Japan is not its fault. Eh? But uh, it's very, very, you know, strong race, Breeders' Cup Classic, and one of the best races in, in the world, and arguably, you know, best race on dart. Yeah, best result ever for Japanese horses, six. So fast five is, yeah, very good result for them. And yeah, my hope is, you know, him to win. But yeah, again, fast three, fast five would be very good result for Japanese Japanese dart horses. And critically, Ushba Tesoro had that prep race that uh, Derma Sotogake missed, which could prove to be uh, could prove to be rather telling here. And yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people, Toshi, they're going to say, Dubai World Cup, well, that's one of the top dirt races in the world, but it wasn't a vintage renewal as sort of shown by the fact that the three-year-olds ran, uh, you know, ran faster, essentially, over, over a comparable distance. Where does that leave you, Klaus, in terms of these two for the classic? Are, are you excited in getting involved with either of them, or is it more a sit and watch? No, I, I'll be excited. I'll, I'll be betting both of them, but... I'm a lot more leery to bet uh, Derma Sotogake off, off of just what he's gone through since the Derby and just that monster layoff. 
you know, originally this is a horse who they said, well, he has a leg injury and he's not going to run for the rest of the year. And then all of a sudden, you know, to do a 360, what was that, two, like, probably a month after the fact, saying, no, well, he's ready to go now. So we're going to send him to the toughest race of his career <laughs> across the ocean. So, uh, again, uh, you know, I would have preferred to see Derma – uh, probably running the Champions Cup if, if he were to run in a, a big, bigger dirt race. But again, I, I applaud the connections for it. And obviously, they think he's the right horse for the job. Uh, you know, if he runs his uh, UAE Derby, he's got he's got a probably a, a half decent shot in here. But it's just that's a huge ask for a horse to come off of a possible injury as well as a monster layoff in the Derby to run in the Classic, in my opinion. So for me, I, I, it's going to be Oosh, by my opinion. Um, if you watch the last race in this prep, you mentioned it, Pete. Uh, you and Kawada had him, you know, wasn't even, you know, people think, oh, this horse is a, a closer, but he's not. He's just, he's a very tractable horse that can be positioned in a lot of different places in the race. Uh, and he always seems to fire his best shot all the time. And, and you know, uh, we have a lot of questions here in North America about horses getting a mile and a quarter. I don't have any question about him getting a mile and a quarter. No, I think that's fair. And I think that push button type of running style is something that can serve you well in any race, particularly a race like this year's Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, I feel like my ideas on derma have been fairly cold watered at this point alex can you offer me any hope <laughs> well i can actually um i was able to pull up the time form u.s pace projection and of course it's lightning fast uh, i can definitely see a, a scenario where you know derma's coming around the outside you know archangelo's tiring saudi crown led until the head of the stretch and he's tiring um maybe mage is rolling but also derma's rolling too and you know, he really did uh, fight hard to do what he did in the, in the Derby and I believe finished sixth um, back yeah. from 14th to 13th all the way up to sixth by eight lengths. But hey, it's no something. kind of trip. I mean, it was a brave effort. Yeah, it was a very brave effort. And I love horses like that coming into such a, a pushy competitive race as the, the classic. So, I'll, you know what? Of course, I'll put money on both Japanese horses. They have my heart, but I think there's hope for Derma yet. <laughs> Michael, what do you think about these two? I'm certainly interested for us to be able to uh, clap eyes on them next week. But from where <laughs> you see it, do you think they can they can trouble the American contingent? I think it will. Com the only comparative aspect to, to each other is, is they ran on the same track. But there's a giant asterisk on that. The track that Derma Sutakake ran on a few hours earlier during the day in the desert, it was very faster. different. It was a whole lot faster, and he was on the inside rail the entire way around. Uh, which is also faster um, and highly biased. So you have, he ran on a speedway, ran lights out on it, and Ushba Tesoro closed from the back on a dead track, a tiring track, and won, to me, won easily that day. Once he consumed them, he pricked his ears and he finished his job. And that's the, that's the, that's the theme with him. I don't think Ushba Tesoro runs well. I think he wins this race. Wow. And I think he, I think, and people think that, oh, he came from too far back because they're looking at one piece of form. They're looking at the World Cup. He's not a deep closer. He's a horse that just puts himself where he's comfortable. And he loves, he doesn't mind, doesn't like, he, lo he doesn't mind taking dirt. He sits behind every horse. Uh, and he, he likes to slice between as well. Like when he went, I was most impressed with him in the Kawasaki Kinnon um, a few races back where T.O. Keynes was an extremely good horse, looked him in the eye and he just brushed him off. You know, it was, it was, it was easily, it was a lot easier of a win than it looked. Came back from out of that. He went into the world cup. He looked a million dollars all week. He was the coolest horse to watch because he wanted to come up to the crowd and watch the media the entire time. Um, he's just, to me, he's just a thriving animal. He's done. The only time he's lost on dirt was a wet track or on a five month layoff. And, you know, he's not going to get that. Uh, so I just think that he had the perfect prep. Those weren't complete bums he just beat. These are decent horses that he just beat and laughed at. And I just think any, any, and he walked across the wire because he had already stuffed them. And he wanted on a, he wanted on a, a seven furlong track with tight bends where he never went more than three wide. So he's ready for Santa Anita. I just think that he's going to be, it's going to be really, I think he's going to sit about three quarters of the way back to halfway back. He's going to start that run at the half mile pole and he's going to move like a train. And the only thing that, the only thing that beats him at that point is whether or not White Abaro runs another number out of his mind and he's already gone. Um, or you see just something unexpected completely. I, 
as far as Domus Otagake goes, he can win the dirt mile. <laughs> um, he, but he cannot win. To me, he cannot win the classic. I just think he's a mind your biscuits. I know there's Neo Universe and lots of stamina on the bottom, but like to me, he looks like an eight to nine furlong horse. And he looks like with that kind of speed and that kind of finish, that's where he's going to find his. He should have run in the Champions Cup. Um, Let's, we're running out of time, team. So, I, but we have one more horse that we need to talk about, Mike. I love the love the bold prediction. Oh, one more quick question: What price is Ishpa Tesoro currently? Does anybody have that? Nine, in front of nine, nine to one. Okay, so a, a very square price, not yeah. bombs away, but a very square price. And what's and what's Derma trading at? He is right now. Yeah. He is sixteen. Okay, so not. Yeah, for, based on this discussion, I feel like that's not quite enough, and the nine on Ushba sounds about right to me. Let's talk about Jasper Crone, cross-entered in the turf sprint and the sprint. Michael, give us a quick thought. We'll just round table Jasper Crone quickly, and then we got to, uh, unfortunately, wrap up because we're just about out of time. If he breaks on top and draws low, he can win the turf sprint. If he runs in the dirt sprint, he won't win. <laughs> Pretty simple. Um, <laughs> Klaus, you're giving a thumbs up. Do you just want it? You want to second that emotion? Yeah, I, like 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 Mike said, if 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 he breaks and goes, like people just need to watch replays of this of this horse running. Like just like I picked him in the in the sprinter stakes, and he took that field a long way going six furlongs last time out. So again, like uh, in the stretch, I'm like, oh, he's going to do it again. But then of course the wheels fell off in the last furlong. But yeah, he's quick. So if if, if U.S. players think that you know he's he achieves speed, just watch his races and know that he breaks and goes like a, like a like a like a quarter horse almost. So yeah. Maybe the Sharp Five will agree. Alex, will this one uh, be another one you're cheering home on uh, Breeders' Cup Day? What do you think of Jasper Crone's chances? 100% agree with what uh, everyone else has said previously. Just also want to add, he ran for five, about five furlongs, 1,000 meters. On heavy turf, he ran a 56.9-second race. <laughs> so that's, that's all I got to say. With no run-up. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, no run-up. But, I mean, hey, that's, it's under a minute. <laughs> that's that's fast time. No, that's impressive stuff. Toshi, how about you? Has there been much talk about Jesper Krohn? What do you think of this one's chances on the big day in either race? I mean, he's kind of been underrated, I'd say, and you know, under the radar. However, you know, he he's very good condition. You know, he's coming, you know, up from the well, Rito's training centers uphill. He's brighting and sprinter sakes, he showed that his form is you know a little bit, you know, lower compared to you know other horses in that grade one race, sprinter stakes, but he showed his you know class, competitive class in the grade grade one race. So yeah, if he's learning tough, yes, he would have yeah, a decent chance. And for the price. Yeah, go for it. Team, this was terrific. Really appreciate your insights, helping me crystallize my thoughts. We're going to have a ton more coverage here on the In The Money Media YouTube channel. Feel free to leave us a, con a comment with who your favorite Japanese uh, contender is or your thoughts on these races. We always love to hear from you, and we encourage you throughout the season to check in. We have uh, JRA guests on the late week In The Money Players podcast consistently. And then over at InTheMoneyPodcast.com on Saturday, you get those PPs. You get those thoughts from the team. Uh, there's some money to be made in North America betting on the JRA. And we are here for it, folks. We'll be <laughs> back with a lot of content between now and the big day. Until then, may you win all your photos. <laughs>